Hey, Pussy No Pussy Net, new little video. Uh, this one is kind of a special request. Uh, I've been, um, as you're gonna see on my channel, I'm gonna make uh, some uh, videos for some co workers that I, uh, some people I work with. And uh, we're going to talk about respiratory problems. And, and somebody asked me a question about it, so I thought, hey, might as well just put it all together. Uh, so at the bottom you'll see a link, and this is the algorithm that I work with. Obviously, it doesn't have all the respiratory disease that you can see on this well. And it's not the, the purpose of this. It's an aid. So obviously, knowledge, like if you have a pulmonary, I mean, some people will study just on that respiratory disease. And, and that's their specialty. So that's how big that uh, the condition is. But hopefully, this will help you a little bit with what you can do and stuff in a self-reliance uh, situation. The other thing to bring up is any videos that we're going to do, it's kind of a series that I'm going to start doing with those algorithms and stuff, and please let me know if you like it or don't like it. And your skills of asking questions will all be better than anything that you'll have. Let me repeat this. So your skills of asking questions will always be better than anything else you'll have. We don't auscultate people to tell us what they have wrong. We confirm what we already know. Blood tests is the same thing. You don't get what the person is wrong with. You're suspecting something in your head. Then we send a blood test to confirm if we're right or wrong. Sometimes we're wrong and then we'll go something else. But the story, this is what we want. We want the story. And this is how you ask the proper questions. That's why the approach of this is yes, no kind of quick questions and everything. Um, so how do we ask the questions? The first thing to understand and the approach that we took is that there's different ways of approaching disease. You can go with signs and symptoms. So each disease has their signs. So signs means something you can see and symptoms is something that the person feels. But there's another approach too that medicine now are doing more and more frequent, which I like as well, is an approach of um, a complaint. Meaning that the person will come and say, I have chest pain, I have shortness of breath, I have dizziness. And this is better because I find it, this is what the person will come. They won't come and say, I feel I have this and this and this and this and I'm coughing this and no. They'll say, I feel short of breath and they come to the emergency because they feel short of breath. So it's better to have this approach. So that's why it's we'll, we'll do kind of big chunks of stuff. The problem with this is that it's impossible to encompass all the disease possible and imaginable and everything and also the limitation of what we don't have so if I don't have a chest x-ray how can I really know what's going on and stuff like this so we'll have to rely a lot on our question and that's why that that algorithm would hopefully help you um, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about things that can help us but and also other stuff that I'll, I'll put links in the bottom but in general, it's asking the right question. And then what to understand is that feeling short of breath doesn't mean that it all comes from your lungs. Yes, that means your lungs are not working properly, but sometimes that's not just the lungs. So sometimes, for example, if my heart is not pumping properly, which we call heart failure, the fluid from my heart will back up to my lungs fill them out with water, and that water will congest my lungs, and my lungs then will, will feel shortness of breath. But it's kind of a symptoms of heart failure. So my problem is not so much my lungs. Yes, my lungs is an issue now. But unless I solve the problem of the heart, my lungs will never be better. Even if I solve the issue with my lungs, I still have to work with the heart. So sometimes some condition will come from somewhere else in the lungs, but will manifest itself through the lungs. Another one too that you'll see, for example, we're talking about if the person's breathing really rapidly. So if, if you have a person, for example, comes and she's like, <gasps> but not using really their their muscles and when they talk to you they don't seem to be so short of breath you know like they can speak like full sentence and everything sometimes some metabolic acidosis that means like some 
have normality in your blood will express themselves through breathing rapidly. And one that is very common is a diabetic ketone acidosis. It's when, so basically, or the uh, hyperhospital non-ketone acidosis, meaning that basically you have problems with your diabetes, your diabetes is out of whack, and it can increase that. There's other stuff that can cause, but diabetes is one of them. So that's why in that algorithm you'll see take a cam strip, which is the C slash S, and then the other one is the, um, uh, take the pH, and we'll talk about in another video how we can do that. But this is the reason I put it there, because you need to think about maybe there's something else going on with this person that it's not their lungs. Uh, that was just like a side note, and now we'll talk a little bit more about respiratory problems. So the problem that we can have with, uh, with the lungs are multifaceted kind of stuff and uh, one of the issues that we can have is uh, well multi-issue we can have infection in there uh, we can have little blockage uh, pulmonary embolism we can have uh, different things um, and also sometimes it happens at the lungs but sometimes it happens higher up as well so, as you see, there's another question also in the algorithm that it says Strider. Strider is basically if you would take a balloon, inflate you know, the balloon, and then when you just breathe it, you this is a little bit the Strider. Basically, what happens is that the airway kind of goes very narrowing. It can happen in different reasons, but a lot of them, and as you could see what it is, is sometimes it can be anaphylactic, especially if my, my throat is kind of closing on me. Uh, the other one as well is I could have something blocked in there. So, for example, if you have someone that you know was eating a odd dog or something, you could have like something there, and basically the air is very decreased, and so it'll make that sound. And the person will still be kind of well more than short of breath at this point, but there it could be still one of the issues. So you may want to check that out as well. Um, so this is more an airway issue than a breathing issue, but still you need to be in the back of your head. Problem of the lungs, while well, you can have, uh, for example, the pneumonia, uh, which is more an infection of the lung. Asthma is a big one um, that you may have as well. And the person will come with shortness of breath with other signs as well and things like that. So that's why that algorithm is there. And if you have any questions, just send it and everything. Because we won't go through the whole disease and everything. So some of them you need to read a little bit more about it. But I think the approach of it remains the same. Because you have to understand that how we breathe is basically, and there's one of them, use accessory muscle. We'll talk a little bit about this one now. So how we breathe is that we have our diaphragm, so it's a muscle right under there. And basically that, that, that muscle goes down. And what it does is that it increases the surface of my lungs. By increasing the surface of my lung, it decreases the pressure that it has inside it. And so now the air outside, the pressure outside of, of the atmospheric pressure is bigger than the one I have in my lung and basically the air will go in. Then when I want to breathe out, the diaphragm will push in, decrease that surface, increase the pressure, and now the pressure is stronger here than here, and so now the air will come out. Breathe in, breathe out. So it's all a question of pressure. So a lot of time, if you feel short of breath, what you're going to start doing is what we call use accessory muscle. Why we call them accessory muscle? And we're saying diaphragm is a muscle. So what happens is that now the whole chest is trying to just be as big as they can because they want as much surface to take the biggest deep breath that you ever took. And how are you going to do this? You're going to try to make your chest look bigger. So basically, you're going to lose your muscles that are at your... Uh, all around your, your side of your chest over here. You'll sometimes use the try, and again, depends on how bad you are in your thing. You'll try to use your uh, muscles in your neck. You'll also try to use over here to try, literally, like to try, like to just open the air. And sometimes, even when you're like, and we're talking right now, like really, really towards the end, you will do what we call the bubble head, and basically, you'll just, every air bubble, like you just, moving your high up and basically what you're trying to do is again pull this up but also create a certain pressure inside of your lungs so that the air kind of open up those alveoli. 
And when you start seeing this, that you're pretty much sure that it's a respiratory issue and that there's something you need to do about it. Uh, so those are the questions and everything, and the cough is really important. So whatever they cough out, try to get a sample, so make them uh, spit in a, a glass or, or something or in a bag or a Ziploc or something and just look at it because the color of it. And again, the algorithm will refer you to the algorithm. It tells you a little bit what, what it is and everything. So now we have someone, it comes, it's sort of bread, you pass your algorithm and now it's like, what do I do? Uh, so if you have pneumonia, most likely it is, uh, well, if you have an infection, so now we need some antibiotics, then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about medication. So what can we do? Do you have them and everything? So now you need to assess if you need to use your antibiotics or not and how you're going to use them and everything. Another thing too that you're going to need on your treatment is oxygen. So now, how do we produce oxygen? Well, the problem is that when the EMS, so uh, Emergency Medical Service, goes to your house, they have those little tanks and it's perfect and everything, but in a situation where basically you're by yourself and you cannot replenish, those little tanks will last, depending on how, how you turn them off, but they won't last like, I think the maximum you could do at two liters a minute. So basically, that's the quantity of of air that comes out of the bottle would be maybe like forty five minutes. If not, I don't remember the numbers, but it's not. We're not talking about days. We're talking about hours here. So, how can we like? Do you make a supply a supply of this? And my answer would be probably not, because the problem is. Uh, it's it's a lot, it's heavy, and you need to keep it in, and you need to maintain it, and it's very complicated. So another solution, and I'll put the link below, it would be a air con concentrator. And basically, as long as you have some air electricity and everything, especially if you have in your group some people with asthma, COPD, or any respiratory disease and everything, it would be a good thing. You can't produce high concentration of oxygen, but it can produce enough oxygen that, I mean, people go by with those things. Some of them are pretty portable, so that would be a good uh, supplement and everything. The other thing too is, uh, for example, uh, a saturation. Saturation is limited, so you have to, if you're going to use this, you have to understand the technology of it. So, for example, if my hands are cold, or if I lost a lot of blood and things like that, those things can be inaccurate. So, if you're going to use it, basically what it does is that it gives you a number on 100%. So, you'll, you'll see 96, 100, or whatever. So, 100% is 100%. Um, and uh, the limitation of those things, like I said, is that, but as you can see, I mean, they're pretty small and pretty compact. And this is the one I carry in the wilderness medicine. I mean, it can provide you some information. So it could be a consideration. And they're only, only about 100 bucks. And probably on eBay, you could get them like cheaper. But this was a brand new one for 100 bucks. So as you can see, I mean, it's pretty robust and everything. And it works with a battery. So it's pretty good. Uh, another consideration, and especially, uh, and even if you don't have asthmatic and things like that to consider, it, and I always have in my, um, in that emergency kit for my wilderness, so I carry like in this, and this, as you can see, it's pretty easy to carry, is aero chamber. So those are aero chamber. Basically, what happens is that you plug. So it's a kind of a. Know, let's open it up. So basically, what it is, it's. Um, little thing and you can improvise those ones but those ones are made especially for our stuff so basically you see you have a big opening here and you stuck a one of those um, puffers inside there and basically then you just breathe the puffer and it helps you so even if you're breathing really quickly the medication be absorbed very very uh, better into your lungs so there's a lot of time people will basically do this but the speed that it goes out that medication it can just go at the end of your throat and basically stuck there and not be very useful because it has to be breathed in as a breath of air. Uh, another thing too that you need to consider is, for example, anaphylaxis can be a cause of shortness of breath, but then it's like, you know, EpiPens and things like that. Uh, so you may uh, want to consider it those. And in the trauma section, when you have to question the pneumothorax and everything, we'll kind of do a little series on that particular, on um, should, should we do chest tubes and things like that. So 
Anyway, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to talk to me. Talk to you soon.